My name is Ryan. And this is where I live. I've set myself a challenge for 2020. I was supposed to be walking the Race to the Stones challenge this year with my work colleagues and for a charity organised by my employers. Two things happened that stopped that from happening. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I got made redundant and they cancelled Race to the Stones. But who needs a job or an organised event to do something important? So I did two things that made something happen. I chose a charity that was close to my heart and I created my own event. The Walk the Line event. Non-stop 60 miles of walking. that knocking? Someone hammering, one of my neighbours. Someone asked me um, why I do this. Funny enough, yesterday, I remember I was at mile marker 30 or 31, and unlike everyone else who just said, keep going, you can do this, you know, take your mind off it, blah, blah, blah. He asked me, genuinely asked me why the hell I was doing this. And it's a good question. You know, other than the charity and the fundraising, can you hear this? If someone's car alarm goes off, there's about 15 people on the street looking around. As soon as I hit record on a camera, someone gets a power drill out, and that house over there, you know, they're building the ark. It was a good question and it did make me think. I thought about it quite a lot. My response was, well, you know, I'm doing it for charity and it's a good event. But actually, the reason why I do this is I love, I love walking. You know, I like running. I'm not very fast. And I've actually put a lot of effort into walking and running to the point where I'm now at a point where I enjoy running. When I first ran over a year and a half ago, it was the first time I'd done so probably since I was about 18 and I'm now 40, and it was horrific, and I didn't get anywhere. And then slowly but surely, over time, I ran a bit, walked a bit, ran a bit, walked a bit. I started enjoying running. I started enjoying jogging, I enjoy it. When I came off the phone, I was thinking about it, because it was an excellent question. And it was something that I was asking myself at 55 miles last night. Right, so time now is, uh, it's about six o'clock uh, Friday evening, the third. Um, I've got a few hours, so the plan is at midnight, so in a few hours from now, I'm gonna be setting out on a 60 mile walk. Um, if I'm completely honest, I am, as you can probably tell by my, by the sweat on my brow, I am quite nervous about this. So this will be, if I complete it, the furthest I've ever walked by far. I've had my, uh, evening meal, so I've just finished my meal. Nice bowl of spaghetti bolognese, which was made by Tracy. She's been brilliant. What, what have we got for dinner? Bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. Vegan. Vegan. With meat free mints. So I've got a small office off the side of my garage. Because I'm doing it in loops, this is where I'm gonna end up at the end of each loop. I've had a lot of people ask me why I've chosen to do this as a challenge. Um, Obviously I've made my trailer video about why, you know, it would give some context as to why. I go into a lot more detail. I don't want to repeat it. So my grandfather has uh, not been very well for a long time. And my nan, up until 
fairly recently has been the individual that has been caring for him along with support from my family. But she took a massive decline for the worst and no one saw it coming, but unfortunately she passed away this year. There was a charity, the Princess Alice Hospice, that have been helping my family through this. And the Princess Alice Hospice are a charity that offer palliative care, which basically means it's end of life care. But one thing I wanted to do with these videos is prove that I'm doing it first, thank you, and you can kind of see an aspect of what I'm doing on on camera. Um, I'm only going to stand out here for a short time otherwise I'm going to destroy my camera but it's starting to rain pretty heavily now. It's been raining for the past hour on and off. Time now is 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. so I've got two hours until I set off for the first loop as originally planned and I said all the way through this I wouldn't be doing it in the rain. That's one thing I won't do. That's better. I'm inside now. Oh, that's bright. The girls have come out and they've put balloons up for me, looking after me to give me some motivation. I've only just seen it. In some ways, I've just spoiled the surprise. Um, but that's cheered me up. I said away from the beginning that I wouldn't be walking in the rain. But now, having said that, I don't want to postpone it. I want to just go. I've got, you know, butterflies in my stomach. I've got anxiety. I just want to do it. I just want to get out there. I just want to do the walk, make it happen. So 80% chance of rain now and then 50% chance at midnight. So if you can see there, when I'll be walking in the early hours, you can see from 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., it's 50% chance of rain. So two options, I either just do it and hope for the best, get drenched, risk it, or get up at 5 a.m. and start then. Next time you see me, could be midnight, could be 5 a.m., we'll see. Me. The GoPro isn't very good in low light. So I'm walking between lampposts. It's 4.28 and we've started. We're inside the first mile. We're gonna do these 10 miles as quickly as possible. I have my energy drinks. We'll be leaving the village. We'll be getting on the path by the railway track. But before we do, we're about to cross over the station for the first time as part of each loop. Let me talk you through the route. There are six loops. Each of the loops are 10 miles. This will get me to my 60 mile target. I start the loops at my house and then end them at the house, which will be the start of each of the checkpoints. The route itself mirandas its way out of my village and up through countryside, farmers fields, past the main lake. It takes me along the contours of the Thames, back up the railway line, over the railway line, and then into the main town. As I exit the town, it takes me back past the main school and again along the railway line. As I walk the line, I cross back over the lake, through farmer's fields and then back into my village. This will get me back to each of the checkpoints. We'd just completed the first stretch. So the way in which I've decided to tackle this, and this is all just stuff that I've done of my own accord. This is all just psychological techniques that I've decided to try and attempt to help me scale this mammoth task. Um, I can't remember who said it, but it was a quote. And let me find out who said it. It was Desmond Tutu that said how to eat an elephant. If you have to eat an elephant, how do you eat one? Well, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So that's how I've tackled this walk. Instead of looking at the whole thing as something I've got to consume, as miles I've got to complete, I've looked at it in sections. So I've broken it down into, into six loops of 10 miles. I've worked out psychologically. So we're crossing 
over the railway line for the second time. If you're gonna eat an elephant, you break it down into pieces and eat it bit by bit. So I've broken this down into sections. I've done the 10 mile loops and I'll be doing six of them. Originally I was starting at midnight just so as I could finish in daylight, but now I'm finishing in the dark. I'm walking uphill now, 4.6 miles, just over 55 miles to go. What I was saying about that road back there, about the bridle path, which is the first section and the last section of the loop. So you start that section and you finish that section. It's about 2.8 miles long and it's Maddie's fault. She hates it. She calls it the road to hell. You can see almost as far as the eye can see. And there's nothing worse than when you're walking long distances, being able to see a really long path in front of you. We're about to go through the graveyard. We're in the graveyard. Maddie said she doesn't want to do this in the dark. Scarlett said she will. So when we do this loop, the last loop tonight in the dark, would it be Scarly or Maddie that wants to come with me? I think I can probably guess. Whoever it is, I'm going to need their motivation. This is a fantastic old church. It's one of the highlights of the walk. We've crossed the railway line four times now, zigzagging our way back, and we're on the we're on the road to hell. We're now at 7.3 miles. At the end of this path is pit stop one. Have I got my food? Thanks, bye. So I do it on the floor. that in oh let's see on camera so I've done that in two hours and 40 minutes I'm about to go again so this is loop number two now all right let's go okay so guys I just woke up and dad has just left for his second run on his walk he didn't really finish his cereal but that's okay Got some avocado and got um, talcum powder on the floor. So the first loop was done in two hours, 44 minutes, which is excellent. If I, main, if I maintain this pace, I'll be finishing at 18 hours. <laughs> Go on, Ed. Would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Da 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 da. change my socks yeah you have to do that all again yeah I have to do it's not even halfway yet i've got to do what i've done this morning again now without coming back i've got to do 20 miles now next time you'll see me will be at 40 miles i'd have done all i'm doing now is changing changing my socks and putting in where is the talc yeah this stops the friction so this stops the bottom of my sock it also ruins your shoe it doesn't it doesn't it's only talc i've got 10 minutes but i've got this far not a single blister with no injuries how fast was this lap? Um, th uh, two hours, 45. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I need that, don't I? Here, we should do what that woman did when that man did the ultra marathon. What was that? This, feeding him. And what, what, and what? You know when that man did that ridiculous walk? Uh, the hardest trial ever. Yeah. 
and he passed out. Oh, the Berkeley Marathon? Yeah, he had like... Three the woman was there, wasn't she, feeding him as he was... And he was eating ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> What is in that? Why is it crunching? Salad. Oh. Stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's weird. Once you get, if you do that bit on the sea wall, that's going to be quite you need a hug. cold, I would imagine. Yeah, I need a hug. Yeah. I also need. Do you want a hug? I also need someone to help me at 50 miles. <sighs> so that's 20 miles down, pit stop. <laughs> so that's 20 miles down, pit stop two complete. I'm leaving now, just changing the batteries. Ow. The next pit stop will be at 40 miles. Okay, I should probably explain what we're doing now. Tracy calls this loop the big loop, as I'm now doing 40 miles as quickly as I can before the next pit stop. As we leave the village, the first seven miles will be along our normal loop and identical to the first 20 miles we've already completed. However, instead of turning left and following the route down through the farmer's fields along the contours of the railway line, we continue straight on along the A road. This will take us almost to the next town where we veer left and follow a pre-planned route down to the River Thames. We take the Thames path for seven miles, which brings us back into the village from the other side. This will in total be a 20 mile loop. Okay, we are now at, let me double check, so we're now at the 35 mile mark, five miles to go until I can have something to eat, and then we go again to get to 50 miles. We approach the 40 miles i will say that my energy levels are dwindling i feel like i'm hitting a wall i'm struggling my muscles are on fire and the soles of my feet are killing me my toenails are hurting and it's all energy related everything obviously the blisters i, I don't know if i've got blisters i don't think i have we're now at the water tower this marks the end the Thames path for me. This is where we walk past the fort now, back into town. Um, it's probably a couple of miles from here. Is this the ice water? Yeah. How many blisters do you have? Yeah. Oh, I've got one there, one there, two. I've got one there. Mummy, I won I've got, the. Um, I've got two blisters guess. now. Oh, who Mommy. won? Dad's got some dinner. What dinner do we have, Mum? So it's pasta with spinach and broccoli. Oh, it's making me feel funny. <laughs> so I've done it in six hours and fifteen minutes, isn't it? Yeah. So I did twenty much. I did 20 miles in 6 hours and 15 minutes. That's pretty good going. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to do these next two in 3 hours. Each. Do your feet hurt? Yeah. I'm in quite considerable pain. Oh yeah, you've got a blister on your heel. Yeah, I've got two. I'm, I'm, I've got two on. There's that one as well. I'm so tired. It was at this point I realised I didn't think I could finish 60 miles. So far I've walked 40 miles. This is the furthest by far I've ever walked non-stop. Up until this point all I've had is some basic food, some energy drinks. I was ready to give up. I was ready to stop. I was so tired I set off without even signing off to camera knowing that the next 20 miles were going to be the hardest I'd ever done. Doubt. Doubt is not the enemy. The best thing you can do for me to motivate me is tell me I can't do something. Loop number five 
this will get us up to the 50 mile mark. I'm with Maddie. Maddie's come to help me, moral support, motivational support, and she's promised to carry me some of the way. I've got my t-shirt on now. Sit rep, we're still on for the 20. Situational report. Um, like sit rep. That's like people saying props. Sit rep. That's like people saying props and they hate it. Can't you just say the full Okay, word? no props. Still on track for a 20 hour finish, um, which will be by 12.30 midnight. Uh, which will be good. Um, I've just had to treat three blisters on my left foot. So we've got some KT tape on the go now. We've got some blister plasters on the go. So we're in a good place. Do you know what my moral support would be the whole time? What's your moral support? I'll just talk to you so you won't realise you're walking that far. Oh, that's good. That's what I want. You have no idea how much of a difference it makes having you with me. After doing 40 miles on my own, it's great to have someone just to even just set the pace. Yeah, so, not that pace. Okay, you probably can't see us now. We've almost completely lost the light. We're coming up to the end of loop five. We're coming up to 50 mile marker. Unbelievable. Maddie has helped me so much on this loop. We're about to swap over. Maddie's gonna go home and put her feet up. Go to the toilet. Go to the toilet. And then we're gonna get Scarly. And I'm gonna try and no, finish. You not try, you're going to yeah, finish. I'm going to finish this ridiculous challenge. So what are we doing? Um, so we're on our last, well dad's on his last 10 miles and he's just, he's on 50 and we're going up to 60 now. Will you do the torch at me quickly so I can film? We're going to do a quick 10 miles. I didn't stop in the house, um, just did a quick shoe change, quick energy boost and went because I knew that if I'd stopped for any length of time I wouldn't want to go again. My feet are absolutely in shreds, but we're going, we're going to do this. Yeah. 10 miles to go. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Time now is quarter past 10. Let's go, Daddy. Let's go, Scarly. We're now walking in complete darkness on rural footpaths. I was in a lot of pain and walking at a slow pace, but I was still walking. This challenge has been 18 months in the making. I've always wondered when watching others do it what it would be like to walk 60 plus miles non-stop. Well now I know. 18 months ago I tried for the first time to walk 10 miles to test myself. I nearly collapsed trying and became obsessed with walking 10 miles and after several weeks of persistent daily attempts I finally did it. How far we got now? 25 miles down. 20. Then I walked 34 miles. I lost three toenails and had to be physically helped the final five miles. Again I persisted and managed to walk 34 miles unaided in record time. Well for me anyway. Then I tried to walk 64 miles across two days last year. The hardest thing I have ever done. Completed it in 27 hours, not including the five hours sleep in between. Right on your chair me up, no end. <laughs> For some reason I have become obsessed with walking and running and I don't know why.
favourite route. So, oh, is it turned on? So I just got back, uh, literally just walked into the garage and I'm done. Um, I've, I've done 60 miles, I've actually done over 60 miles. Um, it's late, 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 but I'm done now. Um, I'm going to bed, I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna have a shower, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm done, thank you. Granddad. Hi. Hi, Granddad. Can you see me? There he is. So we've been talking all about your achievements, and Granddad was asking me yesterday about the walk because I had to go through it with him. Compared it to a London to Brighton walk because obviously Granddad would know all about the London to Brighton walk. Got a thumbs up there. Got a thumbs up. Right. You're on camera. Give me, give me I a. Told him that. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up for the camera. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Thumbs up for the camera. <laughs> Good one. Love you, Grandad. If you had to eat an elephant, yeah. a whole elephant, yeah. how would you eat it? Whole. You'd eat the whole elephant at once, would you? In pieces. You'd eat it in pieces. 